saw an immersion in the, or a hype in the so-called cloud. People were advocating about cloud, that we, we need to move our desktop applications to the cloud. Everyone who was developing an executable application <sighs> or an EXE or a desktop application was told that cloud is going to take over and it's a good time to migrate to a browser-based application. Even though it was a hype, but it proved that it is effective. And nowadays, it's no longer a question to ask if we should develop for cloud or not. Whenever we start a new application, by default we make it on the cloud, available on all browsers, on the all devices, tablets, mobiles, and everything. But that's from the old, old time. Nowadays we are talking about mobile taking over. So nowadays a lot of people are telling that you should develop for mobile devices, you should uh, consider mobile first design, and so on. And if you are really following what big companies like Microsoft and Google are doing right now, you're going to figure out that such a really taking over. They are robots who are taking over, isn't it? So uh, in the near future, we're going to see robots doing most of our jobs, communicating with us. We have seen a huge uh, uh, emerge in the AI system developed by many companies, especially Microsoft and Google. But at the end of the day, unless robots take over, we still need to configure these robots and we need some kind of interface to be able to communicate with them, configure them, program them, and so on. So hello everyone, my name is Mahdi. I work as a developer advocate. And I'm not from Texas. I live in Finland, which is a beautiful country. I welcome you all to visit. Uh, so how many of you were mobile before? Interesting. So for the two of you who didn't raise their hand, uh, Baden is a UI framework for building a uh, web application in Java. But now Baden is uh, taking a completely different curve. So Baden, for those of you here about Baden 4, used to be uh, a framework. Now we are uh, expanding our platform completely to uh, incorporate new web standards and new web technologies outside the Java ecosystem, outside the browser ecosystem. I'm not going to talk today much about Baden, but I'm going to today focus on my intro, which is why cloud was a hype and what's going to happen now. What about mobile? So uh, to start, I will tell you a small story that happened with me two months ago. I visited this little interesting country called America. Uh, when I arrived at, at the airport, it was in Austin. I should be able to do everything with my mobile device. There definitely should be a way to go to my hotel room using public transportation without having to exchange money and get cash and those kind of things. I googled and I found that, yes, that's true, there is a nice app called Cap Metro, not advertising about it or anything, it's a government app or something, <laughs> and that started at 5.23 p.m., not the time. I decided that, okay, no problem, um, the next bus is uh, leaving in seven minutes, and in seven minutes, I should definitely be able to buy a bus ticket. I mean, think about seven minutes, seven minutes is not a small number, seven minutes you can do plenty of things, you can do fold laundry, uh, scan a magazine, you, do, you can do a lot of things in seven minutes, so definitely, I should be able to buy a bus ticket in seven minutes. The thing is, I had to wait for SLBS to come. Yeah, it, it happened. And after that, I finally managed to sign up. Everything went great. Everything was perfect. Till I came at the point of purchase because it asked me again for my credit card information. Is 
sign for local people living there that are going to sign up once and then live with it for their, their entire life.
in my office, eight hours per day, I need to use an iPad. I cannot develop on a mobile device. So how come the number of users moving to mobile device increased? That doesn't make much sense for me. I need speed, big speed. I, I'm using heavy applications. I need heavy processor for them. You know, we are using an IDE or maybe photo editing tool or movie editing and so on. And moreover, you have high speed broadband in your office. So what's going on? Why are you using mobile devices? Actually, the answer to this is we have content producers. And content producer cannot yeah, mean a person who is uh, writing a blog post or writing a content, but I mean a person who is producing web applications, mobile applications, or any kind of content, even if it's a video, even if it's uh, slides, and so on. So a content producer is a person who needs this kind of device for his daily productivity. But we, the content producers, are very, very small, tiny bit of the whole population of people out there that are using the internet. And if you want to target another content producer like us, we are one of the more people with web banking developers. So our audience is very, very small. But if you want to target more users than the world, or billions, as Google says, then you need to think differently. Because users generally don't really care about technology. They are, yes, they are different species, right? They don't care about having the latest processor. They don't care about having the latest updates. They don't care to have broadband internet connected all the time. They want something that just work. Something intuitive. Something that appealing. That, well, that is well designed and just work. So, um, to put everything all together, I am going to show you today a demo on how to uh, develop a client first application. But uh, to do that, since all the time I'm talking about uh, latest web speed and uh, latest technology, I decided to do this demo using web components. So, first of all, we'll hear about web components before. Interesting. So, um, web components is, is a new standard instead of a hype anymore. Maybe one year ago it was a hype, but nowadays it started to be a standard. And it consists of four major topics. So it consists of templates, chat HTML HTML ports, and custom elements. Just in brief, for those who didn't hear about the components before, it's a way of redefining the way we are constructing our HTML in such a way that we can include some of the object-oriented capabilities inside your browser, like interoperability, like inheritance, like uh, other things in OPP. So, how it works, basically, you define your own custom tag. So in HTML, we used to have this tag called div, input, span, and so on. Those are the standard tags. But with, HT with web components, you can define your own tag and start to use it. And this tag is going to produce you some kind of template. I'm not going to go over web components in much detail, except that I'd love to show you one example, like VAD and Bitpicker. So this is one of our web components that we have developed. It's available really open source. And when you put this HTML tag inside your HTML image, what you will get is this thing on the left side. Precisely, what you will get is this blue bar on the top and this icon. And when you click on this icon, the date field will drop and you can start to select date. So having a fully fledged date component is now possible with one line of HTML. And this is because of web components. As I said, it's now standard. It's now uh, available in all browsers. More or less, Safari is now coming up with this. But we believe that uh, the next version of Safari, at least the beta version now, supports a lot of things of web components. So we are seeing this even uh, possible on iPhone devices. And talking about those web components, we have also developed uh, many of other web components. They are all freely available open source. And this is what I was trying to explain. So we are now moving from Java ecosystem to uh, web ecosystem and make it, making it uh, reachable for more developers. So not only Java developers, but even if you are developing with Angular, Polymer, React, any framework, yes, or even .NET or any other programming language, you can basically use this. And this is not because of a magic that we are doing. This is because of the magic of web components. So web components is now an open standard that allows you to use this web component just like any HTML tag that you used to use. So uh, that makes me wonder how many of you are using Angular, by the way. Yes, Angular 3. Yeah, uh, so uh, how many of you are Java developers as well? Okay, yeah, so that's clearly uh, the majority here are Java developers. Luckily, uh, I'm going to show you probably the Java part, but let's see how, how well the, go the demo will go today. But yeah, so to put everything together, I talked about web components, I talked about offline first, and now we need to use the other components, which are web components. Why web components in an offline first design topic? And uh, the main reason is uh, because of the web components are going to help me achieve this a little bit easier. So they are uh, supporting the advanced caching mechanisms. They are supporting uh, the advanced web technologies that we can use in offline first design. And this is what I'm going to show you in the demo. So offline first web components, what is the solution that we can do to, keep, to make our application work offline? The first solution that can uh, come to most of you is caching. Problem solved. But what if your web page is dynamic? I believe most of you are developing by 
size level and most of dynamic magnification. That's why they came up with the so-called offline storage. Offline storage is, or maybe you can call it IndexedDB. Yes, IndexedDB is still a thing, and it's, it makes a lot of sense now, because now there's a lot of APIs that support it and a lot of platforms that support it. So having an IndexedDB, isn't it like a good solution? Instead of just caching your website, forcefully save your data in a form of a database or something like that inside your browser, and the browser will do the rest of the work. We'll keep the data, we'll purchase the data, and then you can retrieve. Even though this is an ideal solution and has been used for many years now, it has a big drawback. Anyone know what is the drawback of offline storage? Yes, synchronization. Why? Sorry. I'm not here about it. It's difficult. Well, kind of difficult. Actually, the biggest problem is data replication, as you said, synchronization. So what if I modify the data? How can I push it back to the server? It's very easy to take a copy of the data available on the server and load it inside the browser and then make it available offline. That's very easy. But that so-called read-only mode, what if I modify the data? How can I push it back to the server? That's going to be tricky. And as he said, it's difficult as well. So data replication is the next topic, and that has been uh, discussed, and that has been like a research topic for many, many uh, vendors. Uh, and there are a lot of solutions, and one of the famous solutions is Firebase. So Firebase uh, used to be an independent company uh, that was solely focusing on this topic, data application, but now it has been acquired by Google, and now when I say Firebase, probably it means many, much more in things like the Firebase platform and uh, the cloud platform and so on. But let's just focus on the Firebase data application topic or libraries that are responsible of basically solving this problem. So what Firebase offers, it tells you, if you buy a server from us, uh, buy subscription or like a uh, perpetual license, and, and uh, implement on the back end Firebase database, then on the front end, you're going to get this offline storage and data replication out of the box. This sounds like a very nice solution, and it has been implemented by many enterprises. And the second drawback is the limitation of the server. So you have to use... Sounds good? Let's start. So, um, in my demo, 